So this video starts out in Valmire, Illinois, which is around 30 minutes east of St. Louis where I live. And I wanted to take my 4x5 and digital camera out on a little bit of a hike because on April 20th, 420, blaze it. Me and my good pals Logan and Bray are going to Colorado to do some hiking. So I wanted to make sure I could carry all my stuff and not die from being out of breath. Most of these photos are on digital, but I also took my 4x5 like I said. These two shots are almost identical, and yes, if you zoom in, it does in fact say weed on the truck. I can also get digital to look like black and white, but color is still a pain for me, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to get them to look exactly the same. But even though my Lumix S1 does have a high resolution mode, as you can see, when you zoom in, film just has a lot more detail and overall just looks a lot better in my opinion. But it's nice to know that I can get my digital to look somewhat like film and be happy with the results. The main topic of this video is indeed criticism and getting critiques on your work. And I bring that up because on the last video that I posted about social media and photography, a gentleman wrote a comment about me trying to get critiques and reviews outside of the social media realm. And it kind of changed my outlook on everything and I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into getting feedback on my work from people that I trust. I had a pretty disjointed opinion on critiques because the only time that I really got them was on social media, specifically YouTube. And the problem with that is that I don't know who is saying those things. I don't know if it's a 12 year old. I don't know if it's a guy, girl, photographer, janitor, plumber. They could be 112 years old. All I see is a username and probably just going to be a picture of a letter. So going into this, I was a little afraid of getting critiques because I didn't want to hear anything negative. I was blinded by a lot of overly positive comments, overly positive feedback, and just getting a lot of praise. And it led me to be a little bit scared of getting any feedback because at this point, I didn't really know if I was actually good or not. I knew that I was good in the social media sense, but in the real everyday photography sense, I didn't really know where I stood. I decided to start small and reach out to my good friend Carl, who has experience with critiques. He dealt with them in school and he would do them about twice a week with uh, different professors. And we went through my whole project and we picked out the ones that did work. We picked out the ones that maybe work. And then we picked out the photos that didn't work at all. And it was just nice to get constructive feedback on certain photos and hear someone, someone else's opinion other than yourself or people that are fans of you on social media. And you don't know exactly if they're saying that because they want to be nice, if they're saying that because they want to just be a comment under a video. There was pretty much none of that. It was just sitting down over a video call and talking face to face. And we also talked about the why of the project and the things that I could 
do moving forward in order to progress and make it better. One thing that I realized talking with Aaron is that I need more still life photos. I need more landscape photos just to give everyone a view of exactly where I'm at in the world. And another thing that I need is just a closer look at the people that I photograph because pretty much any time that I photograph someone, it starts at a distance, center cut, car behind them, and I photograph them that way. And then I slowly move in, but over the course of this project, I notice a lot of these men have dirt under their nails and these thick fingers and these big forearms from working on these cars over the years. And that's something that I wanna to push towards, getting closer photos of just hands and forearms and th the things that you don't really think about when you look at someone but if you look close enough those things will tell the story just like a car does or just like someone's garage does and it's hard for me because when i do photograph these men like i said i'm from a distance and then i slowly move in and it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to get those photos, but it's a challenge that I think is needed and it will certainly help me in moving forward and making the project the best that it can be. And that's exactly what I was thinking about when I took these photographs of Bill, who I met while he was working on a van in front of his house. And I took this one from a distance, like I said, I always do. And as we were talking, I was noticing his hands and I was trying to get a closer look if I could make a photo of that. And I was watching his hand move across the rusty hood of the car, thinking to myself that it might work, but upon closer look, there wasn't really anything there. And with these photos, I wasn't too big of a fan of them. And I tried my best to get his character out of these photos, but sometimes it just falls a little bit flat and that's okay, but this one could have worked, but I think there's just a little too much going on in the background, but it's a little bit more of a dynamic photo with the hood up and him leaning over um, the hood of the car. And it's just nice to have new ideas in your head as you're going out to make photos and just testing things out and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't and just moving on from there. I also realized during this little critique review that I might need to switch up the way that I meet the subjects that I photograph. As of right now, I drive around a shit ton. Um, pretty much anytime there's good weather, a couple hours before sunset, I'm on the road trying to find people to photograph. And there's been multiple times I pass the same place, the same time, I knock on the door, nobody answers, I go back the next day, and it just gets to be a lot and very time consuming. So I might need to switch up my strategy in meeting people and maybe potentially going to a car show or going to a meetup and meeting people that way and then trying to set up a time if someone looks interesting or if someone has a story that might be interesting, meeting up with them at a, at a later date. And that's kind of what I did with these photos of Matt and the cars on his property. My fiance, Emma, her sister is actually dating Matt and he said that he had some cars at his property. property. So I went out there to take some photos. See this light, how good Oh, yeah. We actually got there a little bit earlier than expected, and I was happy because when I came across the Cadillac sitting there in the sunlight, the shadows and the way that the sun was hitting the back of the car just looked really beautiful. And I took these two photos that I really enjoyed, um, just the way that the light was shining in and casting a shadow on the leather seat looked really nice. And I did end up taking a picture of the hood that I completely botched and messed up terribly. And I really wasn't a big fan of it. And then this last photo that I took of Matt with his shadow and the hood of the car in front of the house, I think this could have worked. And when I went to process these photos, 
I don't know what is up with my processing uh, kit right now, but I do use Cinestill's kit. And I think I'm just having some problems with maybe some expired chemicals. So it took me a lot to edit this photo. And I like the composition and I like the idea behind it. I don't know if it necessarily works completely. But again, it's just nice to think about different ideas, think about different composition compositions and try to make something new out of something that you've done time and time again. So I think overall with just getting criticism, I know a lot of people grow up on social media. I know a lot of people grow as a photographer on social media. So you might not be used to getting any criticism at all. Most of the time you'll get positive feedback, you'll get praise, or you'll just get nothing at all. So when someone does come at you with some criticism, you might take it personally, you might be taken aback by it, but overall I think the secret is seeking out criticism and feedback from people you trust and from people that actually care about you and your work and they want to see you succeed because they're not going to say something just to make you happy, they're not going to say something um, just to put a band-aid on the whole situation. They're going to tell you like it is and hopefully you will learn something from that and you'll be a better photographer in the future. So if you guys have any questions about anything, please let me know. My DMs are always open. Leave a comment down below. And if you've been here before and you haven't subscribed, maybe this is the first time I'm asking this in three years, maybe hit the subscribe button. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then. And lastly, a thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I've used Squarespace for three years now, and it's one of the best investments I've ever made. I am able to easily share my work with their customizable galleries, and I can sell prints easily and get paid with their simple-to-use online shop. I can also use their third-party extensions to even ship those prints if I feel so inclined. If you want to support the channel, as well as get a small discount, go to squarespace.com slash brianburks and use code Brian Burks for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And